everybody, it's Sophie and Marco, Dish Out on the Movies, and today we are reviewing a limited series, and we just saw the first episode, and it's called The White House Plumbers, and it stars, at least one of the main stars, is Woody Harrelson, and I would say he's perfect for the part, and if you don't know what the White House Plumbers are, uh, well... You can check your history books, you can check newspapers.com, you can Google them, and you'll find out right away what they were from. They're from the Nixon era. And uh, Woody Harrelson plays, oh, what's his whole name? Is it E. Howard Hunt? Oh, or? God, Sophie, you're already, like, weirding me out. Well, why don't you say it then? Okay. So you have G. Gordon Liddy. And he's and a fruitcake. E. Howard Hunt. E. And Howard Hunt. It's all about their partnership, them teaming up to take down the bad guys and uh, chew bubble gum, right? No, and they weren't taking any bad guys. They were, it was basically a... Oh, what would you call it? Something like today, only it was Sophie, like uh, about the dinosaur days. Just, <laughs> just, just a minute, Safi. These two should have been given a medal for freedom. Marco, don't do that because he's bull- bullshitting. A medal. Okay? They were just med- balls. Medals for uh, bravery and purple stars. Yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's laughing because it's such bullshit. But, <laughs> E. Howard Hunt is, um... He's kind of like you. He wrote mystery. He wrote, like, mystery, espionage, uh, novels, and... He's the person who they based Mission Impossible off of. Oh, did they? And, of course, Ethan Hunt. It's all based on him. Ah. And then he also had part in the JFK assassination. And then... And so, anyways... This episode, I thought it was really good. I mean, I wasn't expecting it to be bad at all. Like, I knew that it's. it seemed like you have a strong cast of talented actors, and then it's kind of like a comedy, and it's, you know, it's a true story as well. Safi, what do you have well, to say I'm about it? Well, I'm just trying to think I mean, at the just, beginning. I you're just think like... At the be- at the beginning, they say nothing is made up. It's this is all real. It all really happened, and uh, really, I believe. I don't know. Oh, but, really? Did they say it's, that? It's funny that they have. Uh, it's just I remember those days, but I was younger, and I was in high school, and uh, into the early years of college, and so I was kind of busy. But I don't. I know my mom. And Dad were really paying very close attention. But did you pay close attention to the episode? Yes, I did. Well, what'd you think? Well, they're good. They were really good actors. And they uh, came off as like dopes and that breaking into those offices. They haven't even... I mean, I think Marco said this is five episodes. Yeah. And... um, so this this episode is all centered around them breaking into this psychiatrist's office so that they can get a file that will show that the patient is is a communist. Yes. And, and uh, it's, it's Daniel Ellison who they're trying to prove that he's a c- communist. It's, and it's typical, like... I don't know what just, they're so afraid of. It's just a typical, like, waste of resources and waste of time. And, uh, you know, but they're in charge of doing this kind of dirty, uh, low-down, like, objective, and they're just... Well, it was called Dirty Tricks, and they even said that. In fact, they failed at what they were doing. So they got fired by the White House, and the White House rehired him to do different projects, and they t- t- entitled it D- Dirty Tricks. They didn't say, they didn't call it Dirty Tricks before, but they, and so they were masters of Dirty Tricks. And yeah. that, I mean, it was, it was kind of like funny, but then it was mean, 
like one I'll just give you one example from history Muskie who was uh running for what was it senate vice president senator whatever he's from Minnesota and they showed him what uh, I don't know he had dandruff or something and it was snowing and I they did all these they they would kind of do things to to Sophie. embarrass people to nobody's put gonna, them down. Nobody's going to vote for someone named Muskie. Okay, uh, he was really beloved in well, Minnesota. They didn't think he was stupid, they, but they tried I would to make never, him look stupid. He was a Democrat. I they would were never, Republicans. I would never vote for someone named Muskie, Safi. Well, I don't care. I think that's stupid because he's probably Muskie. No, he was a really nice person. Yeah, maybe. but he, he did. He was kind of like a, he. He's musky. I think he was well liked in Minnesota, but they were trying. I mean, they were just. They were just. They were like little gremlins. Well, he's not well liked in my room. So. Oh, jeez. They were like gremlins, and there's one that's left over from then. I don't even know. I mean, a lot of these people that they're talking about, they're dead, and I'm that they didn't get killed. They are dead from, you know, being old or having sick like cancer or something. And Roger Stone, who everybody knows, he's a leftover from those days. So he was a big But Safi, what you what you think about the episode tricks. though? Like well, you know, the episode of television that I you thought, watched? I just said it was really I thought the, they did really well uh, really good. The I episode. really like Woody Harrelson I would say is perfect for the part. And I'm glad that he's playing that yeah. part. I was kind of hesitant for him because he doesn't really look like the character very much. No, but he... But he, he does a perfect portrayal of yes, he does. The, the person. And I would say that it it was a very good choice. And then the other guy... G. Gordon L- Liddy. He did. I I thought he did a better job. I th- well, I, at least they were equal. I don't know who who is equally playing. good. I I didn't know the other actors because they really had them made up, and uh, I haven't gotten a chance to see who plays the other characters. But G. Gordon Lily Liddy, I apologize. He was a fruitcake, and boy, they did make him look like a fruitcake. Whew. Well, yeah, that's where a lot of the comedy came from this episode, and I will say that it was very funny, and in comparison to a lot of other comedies nowadays, this was actually funnier than those said comedies, because the the comedy came from just facts that they just presented on screen. Well, they like were... It, it wasn't like, oh, we have to make up jokes now, it was like... They just had to be look. themselves. That's yeah. all they had to do. No, I mean not as a, not as actor, uh, p- the people playing them. I mean as G. Gordon Liddy, Liddy as if that was G. Gordon L- Liddy, or he E. Howard Hunt. All they had to do is be them, and how people perceive them when they read about them, and it was it was really spot on. I'd say probably the best part, the funniest part, besides all. The- uh, and I will say they're a great duo, and so yeah. a lot of them working together is really good, and it's really funny. But I thought that the funniest part was when E. Howard Hunt and his wife came over for dinner, and then G. Gordon Liddy puts on a record of Hitler giving speeches. Real loud, <laughs> and not just playing it low. But really loud to where they could hardly hear each other talk. And you can barely hear the dialogue. Yeah. And then at the same time, people are, like, throwing eggs at their house. And then G. Gordon Liddy, like, climbs down outside and he's chasing after them. And all that was really, really funny because it just felt so natural and probably true to what happened. And so that was my favorite funny sequence even though I thought the whole episode was really good well I I would like to read more about why it was made and why they decided to focus on them because I don't think there's well we have had yet to find out but there's nothing comparable to that today and it was they were very unique in their what they did and well, I don't want to say anything else. But anyway, they they were really... Uh, people thought this breaking in business, when they tried to break into the psychiatrist's office, that's not the only place they're going to break in. I'm sure they're going to show that in one of the other upcoming episodes. But they were kind of seen as buffoons. 
And I remember the night that Nixon won, I think, and they'll show it too, I'm sure, uh, the break-in people. I don't know if it'll be the, I think it'll be the same ones they hired to do the psychiatrist. I'm not positive. It's been a million years ago. But they look, were, look they were, they had got, they got arrested, I think, that night when he was seen as the winter, winner of the election. And, uh, <laughs> they were just seen as buffoons. And, uh, but there, and G. Gordon Lee, like I said, he was, this guy was really good at playing him and doing all this. I mean, you saw him. He ran up the stairs and climbed out the top window or something and dropped down. And you've like seen this out the window. And E. Howard Hunt and his wife, their backs are to the window, so they don't even see what's going on. <laughs> so, I mean, he is a crazy yeah. fruitcake. Um, and E. E. Howard Hunt wasn't. He was a little bit better. He was. I don't think he was as. Well, he was a degree less, but just the two of them and the acting, I thought, was really good. And so. Um, and so first we see them. They travel to California, to photograph, the psychiatrist's file and cabinets. So that was, I guess they can see the lock so that they can break in and know what kind of tools they need to get the locks open. I thought that was bizarre. And it just seemed like, God, this is such a waste of money like that is is being paid for the, uh, for like, I don't... <laughs> They're wearing it, disguises? Yeah, they it, Which they was really funny, too. Goofy disguises and... I like that too. I hope we get to see more disguises because I think, you know, E. Howard Hunt was famous for that. Like in Mission Impossible, they had the, yes, the they masks. Were. Yes. So. Really good disguises, though. These weren't very good at all. You could have gotten these at the Halloween store. They were purposefully bad, though. Like they just said, like, as long as it distracts people and, you know, people just say, well, he had crazy hair and he had glasses or something like it's basically like just distraction yeah and so after they do that they have to go back and this time they have this Cuban crew and I think they were in the failed bay of pigs of pigs invasion yeah because they talked about they kind of alluded to that but they didn't really come out and say these guys were part of the bay of pigs and Invasion, and they say Kennedy's name, and they all—all all of them acted disdain, disdainfully, which means they were like, mm, "Him," because maybe they felt like they were let down. I don't know what happened. I—I I, I don't want to because I don't even want, because that, it wasn't on that. But they were—it seemed like they were part of that, and so you got to wonder, since that was a failure. What are they going to be doing at this, and how successful are they going to be? <laughs> this thing where they invade the uh, the psychiatrist's office and uh, open up the files and or get the, this one file and well, they do a terrible job, right? And well, just the whole thing goes wrong. To me, this whole show is kind of like Fargo without the murder. Yeah, like that's what it's kind of like. If you want to make like a comparison of like oh if you like this you'll like that i think that if you like the fargo series then you'll really like this as well and so they just they make a complete disaster of the whole thing because the lock is broken on that filing cabinet now did they break the lock i don't know hear that no no it was it was already just broken. broken which is pretty hilarious because it's like what do you do in that situation like in in order to, like, you know, what could what should they have done? Like, just left. And what they do is they end up making a big mess on purpose. They go invade another office, and it's a place where there's pills, and then they get those pills, and then they dump them out all over the floor. So because they want to make it look like a a. a um, what do you call it? Well, somebody was trying to break in to buy to get drugs. Yeah. 
can't think of what the word is. It's common. yeah, you, you can't think of that common word. Yeah, software. I know it's really bad. That but one any, word. But anyway, it was all so anyway. It, with the then they weren't happy. Uh, uh, Hunt and um, Liddy were not happy about it because they made a big mess in two offices, two, not one, two, and uh, they didn't think that anybody would believe that. Well, apparently. Then they find out afterward because there was a newspaper article that, yes, that's what they thought. And that that was part of was. the comedy, too, is the fact that these guys are such idiots, and yet in this first episode they succeed technically, and then they get promoted, and then they get, they said they're going to give them a million dollars as payment for their work on the, uh, the committee to re-elect the president. <laughs> and so it's like... It's just kind of unbelievable how they're they're just such screw ups and then they they get all this acclamation and everything and then the the police are so retarded that they can't figure out that that was like a, a break in that was framed as something else. But then again, you know, there's a lot of these cases that you see where their frame ups is something else and then the police will be too stupid to see that it is a frame up. For something else like uh, certain serial killings you know well lots of serial killings you, you know they don't really uh, they just see like the surface level thing and so they don't go beyond the surface yeah like with the BTK killer you know those those were clearly like contract killings those were not just like the work of a serial killer and so like that would be like a prime example and so it was kind of hilarious just it was it was really good though because it it didn't feel like a, an agenda show like they just made it to kind of you know do stuff that Safi wants to see or something like that you know it just seems like they wanted to make like a a good historical show and they did well, it'll be interesting to see if they show Roger Stone because he was just—he was very, very young. I mean, you know, he's real—he's old now, but he was extremely young. So I don't know if he would play in any big part in any of this. And then they did show—is it Howard Dean? I mean, this the, the Howard first Howard Dean. Yeah, Dean. He's Maybe. the one who told them what their assignments were going to be. Maybe that they got. Well, he has played a role in today's world testifying about certain things uh, similarities or parallels between what happened then and now because he was a big guy he was very important to uh, Nixon and the White House back then and uh, anyway they show him and he's very young and of course now he has white hair he's old so like Roger Stone he and Roger Stone are older so uh, it'll be interesting. That's but but most of, all the other characters in real life, they they have passed away. But anyway, it'll be interesting to see what else what the else they're gonna do with it. I thought they did really good. I yeah. just I would like to know why they decided to make this. Well, it's HBO. So. Well, you know, it's not just TV. It's HBO. So they had to do it. Well, I just wonder why they focused on them. And uh, why? Why that part of the whole? I mean, it was a whole complicated thing. And I mean, I'm talking about Watergate, everything associated with that. Nixon, even the vice president who actually did go to prison. And uh, so I would love, I mean, that this is just one part. Maybe because of the comedy and well, the people they could get to play the parts. That's what I think is I cool. Know. That's what I think is cool is that, like, you know, a lot of these historical movies, they're complete failures because they just... They, well, they're too serious. They're, and... they're too serious and they're too broad. Like, yeah. they're like, okay, let's make a Watergate movie and let's just show, like, these little tiny snippets of all the different moving components. And there's no where, there's just too many. Whereas this show is just focusing on a very small piece Art. of that. Yes. And so I think that there needs to be more of that because to me it, it it's a huge uh 
it, it's really good. I mean, they did a really good job with that. And, and so, they got good people to play the parts, too. I can't really think... And that's another thing, too. I can't really think, when I think of, like, true story movies, I can't really think of any that are good that are just, like, these general, broad movies about, like, this complete topic that's just tackled in one movie. Like, when you think about true story movies, it's usually, like, about people. And so you think about, like, all the president's men... That was a small section of the story as well, where it's just the two reporters uh, getting the story. And then you think about, like, Pond Sacrifice. That's just about one guy. And well, then. What was the one they showed? R- Roosevelt. Roosevelt? Yeah. Franklin Roosevelt. And they Franklin showed Roosevelt. his. Before he. He, I he got. Remember, he had polio, what the fuck? and he kept going to this. Uh, Safi, that's some movie that somebody else watched. I've never seen that. Oh, I know. That's why I say that's another uh, true story thing. But it was, uh, I don't know. It was a more serious. It it wouldn't be meant to be funny anyway. But it that was interesting too. But I don't know what that was. But it was a real life. I mean, I can't think of anything. Only everything I think of is, you know, just, just made people. up. Made up. Well, what, just what I'm saying is that the the good historical movies are are usually the ones where they're more focused and they're not these like broad, like wide scope things because, uh, you know, you really don't have time to tell all the details in this huge story. Well, what about the Big Short? What would you call that? That was focused. It's just focused on those couple of guys yeah. who are uh, taking the money. Yeah. They're getting, uh, getting the money from the idiots. Yeah, I'm, trying, I'm trying, just trying to think. And then Vice, you know, that's just about the dick, dipshit dick. And then... Uh, dick Cheney. So that's why this show was good as well, is because it wasn't like trying to show all these different things like it was just very focused and it it honestly felt like it could have been fiction like it felt like they could have written this and like maybe it never happened like if that's how good it felt in terms of the script and the writing and everything so i give the episode an a i do too i can't give it an a plus just because i don't think it's it's perfect it was perfect, but I, I, I would give it an A. Well, I am going to go look um, uh, about why they wanted Ellsberg's clinical psychiatric file. Uh, wh- why did they care that he, he was a, if he was a communist or not, which he wasn't, I don't believe, and, and why, what, why was it matter? And I, I, you know, I just don't know because I didn't pay that. My, my, my mom was here. She would have known, right off the bat. She knew if, all. If your stuff. mom was here, she would be getting one of her cans and eating the cans. What's Safi, talking about? You know her giant can wall. She had the wall of canned food. <laughs> what was that for, Safi? Was that for? There wasn't any room in the cupboards. Was that for the Cold War? <laughs> No, is Marco. That, we had a tornado emergency? shelter, our basement, because we had to go to the we had to go to the basement every year. We lived in Kansas City. Kansas City's in the middle of a tornado zone. Now you and, don't have uh, a basement. So yeah, no, yeah, we, we we have tornadoes here, but we have no basement now. Yeah. So the, our our best bet will be to go into the bathroom. If there's a tornado, <laughs> you get fucked up. Yeah, and they we had one here where we are on Memorial Day. Uh, Three years ago, we had 13 tornadoes in this area. 13. And right behind us or to our south, what, west, I don't know, a whole bunch of the area was, uh, you, you know, you can see it today. It's part of the trees are gone. But anyway, um, I don't know why we got off on my mom. Because we had a, we, she, we went to the basement here, every be, year. She'd be eating her canned food. We had a bunch of food and cans uh, for the basement. Yeah, and, and it was all like sitting in like the side of the refrigerator and the staircase into the other room. 
and it just looked like it just smelled like canned food like it just smelled like fucking canned tuna and canned food and it was just the most weirdest thing and it's like what the hell is this it's like tales from the crypt episode come to life oh please anyway my mom isn't alive anymore but she was my she was a very big politico and uh she was she knew all about this water, all the Watergate stuff. She knew every little. She de- knew all the answers. To she knew every pursuit. little detail about it, so she would be able to tell you why they were so interested in Daniel Ellsberg, and. Uh, she wouldn't. She wouldn't miss a single question in a Trivial Pursuit. Probably not. <laughs> not not on this stuff. But you do, Safi. You you missed a lot of them. I was busy. And then you tried to deceive me last game we played yeah i you, beat marco but you, just barely he was try, really good he knew a lot of stuff yeah safi right. safi was trying to use dirty tricks on me yeah and yeah, there was right. a question and there's something about some gardener named william goodworth or something and safi's like and it's like the question is like what what actress was murdered where this gardener was first thought as the the suspect and and i was like oh well that's obviously uh sharon tate and then safi was safi tried to deceive me and she tried to say oh i don't know who this actress is no, i don't i, I don't think you'll that. know at all i said didn't know who the guy they were talking yeah, about so, we never heard his name so then i second guessed myself and i said sydney fox instead because she was another actress who was uh murdered and then they didn't figure out who did it, uh, although they they think the husband did it. But I was also kind of thrown off, too, because with her, with Sharon, they thought that her stupid husband was the one who killed her at first. Like, he was the prime really? suspect. And he still is a prime suspect to everyone who has a brain. And so... Uh, so I, I had to, like, be like, oh, well, I was going to guess that at first until you said... I you you would I don't think you know who this is. Well, let's not forget. Like, let's not uh, pretend like we don't remember trick. that I w- let him have it. Dirty I trick. I let him win the because he, I kept insisting that I was misleading him and I wasn't. You were. That was a dirty trick. Oh, Marco, shush up. A very dirty. Ugh. Shame on you. So anyway, dirtier, we both give this uh, your dirtier, first episode. Be quiet. You're dirtier than E. Howard Hunt. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> goofball yeah. um <laughs> he could have been the one who assassinated john f kennedy you know he's one of them yeah anyway um but he he's passed away too so so is the other guy so liddy i'm pretty sure g gordon liddy i thought another thing another reason why i didn't give it an a plus and uh, and i gave it an a is because with E. Howard Hunt, I could kind of see like some of the inner machinations of like a typical true story movie where the main character goes home and then we see his family and that's all kind of boring and kind of like not really as important as the main meat and potatoes. You know, like there are like a couple of scenes where it's just like he comes home and his daughter quit college and he's mad at her. And there's, like, a dinner scene with his family. And, you know, those are just, like, very typical true story type of scenes. So yeah. I thought, like, maybe those weren't very necessary. Or maybe they are, like, I don't know, like, maybe they'll have more to do with his family in the next couple episodes. Well, I don't know which one it was I was telling Marco, but one of them's wife actually had hush money. She carried it in a bag with her. And I can't remember if she got caught or whatever, but I don't know which one it was. Did she use it to buy canned beefaroni? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> to add uh, to the wall of canned food? Marco. Anyway, so we both gave it a good review, and uh, if you can watch it, it's on HBO. And uh, if not, when it comes out later to be you know you can watch it somewhere else be streamed or whatever uh be on the lookout for it um yeah it's on hbo it's not on tv it's on hbo 
Okay, Marco. So <laughs> that's it for now. Goodbye, everybody. Uh, well, what about the other stuff you're supposed to say? And don't forget to uh, like our uh, audio cast. That's another and dirty trick. Subscribe to our channel. I haven't said that in a while. It's been a while since I've been do. I've been working on my uh, saboteur. My uh, stores. You made the sick and, person uh, make Marco the videos has been, himself. Marco has been doing. Mar it, this is really mainly Marco's channel, but he's been doing all of these reviews and. Well, he's been sick. And he has not been feeling well too, so he hasn't been doing as much. And the doctor said the medication won't even work until next week today. Or technically Thursday, so yeah. I'm I'm still gonna sound like this until thir Wednesday or Thursday next week. Yeah, and I'm am watching. I am in the middle of watching the very last season of Monk. I'm almost at the end, and I know they're doing a Monk movie. And of course, you know that the Hollywood is now having a writer strike. So I'm sure that will affect the making of the movie. So well, we'll I, see what I, happens. I would write I would write the monk movie for free. So how about that? Like, oh boy. I don't care about no stupid strike. Like, I'll write I write a monk movie for free. I'll write a monk movie right now. Yeah. Okay. Scene one. Marco. Monk walks into her room. And he says, "So everyone." You guys know that season eight, it did not happen, okay? <laughs> that was a big mistake. And we apologize for the obscenities that you witnessed on screen. And this will be the real version of season eight. Cut to main opening titles. No Randy Newman shit song. Uh, yeah. Original theme song comes on. Hopefully that will... They will change. <laughs> okay, now the opening credits are over, and you see Monk, and he has just gotten married to Natalie. <laughs> and then they get a <laughs> they get a bad guy. <laughs> Beat that, Safi. I just what? made a better movie than the one they're actually going to make. Oh, now, Marco, you don't know that. Yeah, I do, because regardless, he's not going to be with Natalie, and then season eight still happens, so it's going to be trash. Like, oh. you just can't avoid that. Like, and then, the well, you know what's coming. Okay, well, we'll see what happens, and hopefully the writer's strike won't last very long, because I remember the other one that they had several years ago, that got a little ugly, and it went on a little bit too long. Well, so. I, I, I'll, I'll write all the replacement scripts for free. Mm. It, but just an IMDb credit would be included. <laughs> would be the payment. <laughs> Wouldn't that be hilarious? Sophie? No, because uh, those people have jobs, and they had yeah, to pay their bills. They're shitty-ass so. shitty writers, Sophie. Well, a lot like, of them are. The right? writing has gotten so terrible that they don't even deserve pay anymore. No, you can't say that about everybody, Marco. Sophie, did you even see Better Call Saul season oh, six God. last year? It's not the only did show. You, <laughs> did you okay, see goodbye, that? Okay, goodbye, everybody. Bye.